Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the weekly Outside Views report on the politics in Africa and Arabia. And today I need to talk about the dangerous situation in Sudan again. Because another attempt at a ceasefire in Sudan has failed. And in Khartoum, civilians are stuck in their homes while fighting rages outside. And the German Bundeswehr is again preparing an evacuation of German civilians. According to eyewitnesses and media reports, heavy fighting continued in the Sudanese capital Khartoum, despite the beginning of celebrations at the end of the Islamic month of fasting Ramadan, agreed as a ceasefire from Friday. The RSF, that's one side of the battle, wrote on Twitter that they were supposed to open humanitarian corridors for the evacuation of citizens on the Muslim holiday Eid al-Fitr. Sudanese should be able to visit their families on the important day for Muslims, they said. However, the Sudanese military did not confirm the ceasefire. Another United Nations worker was also killed in the fighting. The United Nations Organization for Migration, the IOM, in Geneva announced that the man and his family were caught in a crossfire between two warring parties in their car. The incident happened in Obaid, almost 400 kilometers southwest of the capital Khartoum. I'm deeply saddened by the death of our colleague and I mourn with his wife and newborn child as well as with our team in Sudan. That was said by IOM Director General Antonio Vitorino. On Saturday, three World Food Program staff were already killed in North Darfur. The organization has stopped its work in Sudan because of the fighting, as Vitorino said. The IOM has been deployed there since 2000, among other things, to support around 3.7 million displaced people. According to the United Nations, thousands of Khartoum residents have been stuck in their homes uh, for days, many of them without electricity or running water. Food, petrol and medicine ran out, and according to media reports, the capital was again bombed in the morning um, of Monday. And in addition, soldiers of the Sudanese army are said to have combed residential areas. In the fiercely contested African state of Sudan, some countries have begun evacuating their own nationals and other foreigners. Saudi Arabia said it has taken 157 Saudis and people of other nationalities out of the country. And television pictures showed people on a warship. It's not yet known what nationality they have. And Kuwait said some of its citizens had arrived in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. And Jordan said it had started evacuating 300 people. A foreign diplomat said some embassy staff in Sudan's capital Khartoum are hoping to be flown out of the country in the coming days. And the U.S. embassy warned U.S. citizens that traveling in vehicle convoys from Khartoum is at their own risk. After a week of fierce fighting in Sudan, U.S. President Joe Biden has decided to evacuate embassy staff as well. France and the Netherlands are also reporting the first operations to bring back citizens. In view of the heavy fighting in Sudan, the USA has withdrawn its government employees from the country and closed the U.S. embassy in the capital Khartoum. All U.S. diplomats and their relatives were successfully brought to safety. That was said by the White House and the U.S. State Department. According to a military representative, around 100 special forces from the U.S. military were involved in the evacuation operation. They were there for less than an hour. Under Secretary of State John Bass added that fewer than 100 people were flown out during the operation, including several diplomats from other countries. Biden calls for a ceasefire because the, he wants the parties to immediate and, and uh, have an unconditional ceasefire. And he also urged them not to obstruct humanitarian aid and to respect the will of the Sudanese people. The decision to evacuate American personnel came after a week of fierce fighting between rival military factions. The Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support, uh, support forces, with hundreds dead and thousands wounded. For days, the U.S. military had been preparing with other Western countries for the evacuation of their own citizens. Additional forces were transferred to the region for this purpose alone. In addition to the USA, European countries were also trying to evacuate their citizens. 
Britain reported that British diplomats and their families had been successfully evacuated. This was announced by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, although there is criticism in the public that they left a lot of people behind. At the same time, he called on the parties to the conflict in the African country to lay down their arms and for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire so that civilians could leave the conflict areas in Khartoum to be evacuated. Um, and according to the Greek foreign minister Nicolas Dendias, Greece is transferring special units of its military and aircraft to Egypt for their evacuation mission. And according to uh, Foreign Minister Wopke Hoekstra, the Netherlands were joining a joint operation by several countries. The Netherlands is participating with a team from Jordan. They will do everything they can to get Dutch citizens out of there as quickly and safely as possible. That's what Hoekstra wrote on Twitter. And France was also making efforts to evacuate its embassy staff from Sudan. The German Ministry uh, of Defense announced that an expeditious evacuation uh, operation of diplomatic personnel and uh, nationals was being carried out. And according to media reports, Spain had previously sent a total of six planes to Djibouti to evacuate its citizens and members of other nations as well. Other countries had also started evacuating their own nationals and other foreigners. I already talked about Saudi Arabia and uh, Jordan and uh, Kuwait, but um, there are a lot of things going on. And meanwhile, since I was writing this, I already learned that another 300 people have been evacuated by the German Bundeswehr. Um, so when you see this, probably a lot has happened again since I filmed it, because uh, you get news, new reports all the time about the situation there. And... Um, the, the Spanish I mentioned already and uh, the Greek and uh, kind of every other country is involved somehow um, because everybody has staff there and it's not an easy thing but the conflict is still going on and the Sudanese army previously said it would provide safe routes for the evacuation of US, UK, French and Chinese nationals but, uh, but the, the rival forces of the paramilitary militia RSF pledged to allow evacuations to keep all airports partially open. However, the international airport in Khartoum is a scene of battles. And it's also unclear whether the RSF has con control over this airport. The fighting between the two most powerful generals in the country and their units broke out just over a week ago. The two men have led the country in Northeast Africa with around 46 million inhabitants since two joint military coups in 2019 and 2021. De facto President Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, who is also the commander-in-chief of the army, is fighting with the military against his deputy, Mohammed Hamdan Daglo, the leader of the powerful paramilitary group Rapid Support Forces. For years, power has been said to be handed over to a civilian government. And al Burhan repeated this in his first video message since the fighting began. But there were never concrete signs of a transfer of power. And according to the World Health Organization, more than 400 people have been killed in the fighting between the Sudanese military and the influential paramilitary group RSF so far. The conflicting parties announced on Friday that they had agreed on a ceasefire I mentioned earlier in the video, but still explosions and shots could be heard again. And according to observers, the trigger for the fighting was a dispute over the details of the RSF's incorporation into the military as part of the transition to a civilian government in Sudan. The military staged a coup blast in October 2021 and has ruled the country which is one of the poorest in the world ever since. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.